that unprecedented picture of American soldiers leaving their weapons at the door or when listening to a speech by their own Secretary of Defense. I mean, that is the equivalent of the diplomatic equivalent of helicopters on the roof of the embassy. Mm. Conservative columnist Charles Krauthammer on special report last night. Upset that more than 200 U.S. Marines in Afghanistan were ordered to disarm before a meet and greet with our own Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta, at Camp Leatherneck in Afghanistan. U.S. officials tried to downplay the highly unusual move as voices like Krauthammer weighed in. Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North is a Fox News military analyst and host of War Stories. He has spent significant time at this base. He knows these Marines very well. Colonel, thank you so much for being here on this. This is a story that got so much attention after we talked about it on this program yesterday. What do you make of it? Because it's a startling image to see the faces of those Marines without their weapons as Defense Secretary Panetta addresses them. Well, it is unprecedented, Megan. I've been over there when other officials from the senior levels of the United States government have been there. I've never seen anything like this happen before. And that includes former secretaries of defense, presidents, members of Congress. So one, it is unprecedented. Number two, the story on why it happened has been mixed coming out of the Pentagon and various spokesmen. Uh, it was either done because of the incident that occurred just as Secretary Panetta was landing where a stolen pickup truck crashed and caught on fire. Which they Whether deny. It was done to, which, they, of course. Uh, it's also been explained as it was done to, in fairness to the Afghans who weren't being allowed to carry weapons. They never are in those, in those kinds of engagements. And lastly, it's been done uh, as something that's just normal run of the course, which it isn't. The bottom line of it is that it's emblematic of what's happened in this war with this commander in chief. The one that we hired who promised to win the war no longer wants to. It's clear to me that what's going on right down the hill from where I'm sitting today at Pennsylvania Avenue, that this administration has decided that their only strategy is to get out and get out quickly. And that, of course, is affecting everything else to include events like this today. Describe what it means to a Marine to tell him he has to lay down his weapon before he goes to an event like that. Well, it, as I say, it's unprecedented. I've never had an experience like that myself as a Marine officer. I've never had an experience like that covering this war now for 11 years. You take never your, you take your gun like with it. you everywhere. I mean, when yes, you're in you Afghanistan take, especially. Uh, absolutely. In fact, all the interviews that I've done with you from various bases all over Afghanistan and Iraq, the Philippines, and these, all the places that I go to cover American troops, they've always got their weapons. Now, it's never, and by the way, it's not just Americans. The British soldiers were told, leave your weapons outside as well. They had to exit the tent, put their weapons down, leave guards with them, and come back inside. If this is true, what the administration is saying, which is they, they did it because we made the Afghans do it, and so it was you know, sort of an, an even deal. Uh, if that is true, even though that's not how we've done it in the past, the Afghans have always been uh, forced to leave their weapons, and the U.S. Marines and soldiers have not, is this a new policy? Are we likely to see this whenever the president speaks to the troops, with the vice president, the defense secretary, you name it, some dignitary coming before our troops? Well, you know, there was a review, there was a, a review where the president of the United States and the, the prime minister of Great Britain happening in the United States at that very time that this event's occurring out in Afghanistan. All of those soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines had their weapons. So I don't think we're going to see this kind of thing repeated. But I, I want to make the point, what's very important here, Megan, is this is emblematic of what is happening in this administration. They are disarming the young Americans who are fighting this war, taking away from them the latitude that they need to fight it and win it because they no longer intend to win. Is, are they, is the morale hurting, do you think, among our troops? I, I, you know, I've talked to a number of them over there over the course of the last 24, 48 hours. Uh, yesterday, I spent uh, almost the entire day at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center here in Washington, D.C. with wounded warriors. One of the mothers of a very severely wounded Marine said to me, in the aftermath of all of what we've been covering, I certainly hope that my son's sacrifice is not in vain. You know, I've not heard those kinds of things from anybody since the Vietnam War. You know, I want our viewers to know that yesterday we wanted to talk to you about this story and we called you in the morning and we found out that you were going to Walter Reed and you told us, I never cancel that, I'm going. So we appreciate you doing that and coming on to talk to us about your views today. Colonel North, thank you, sir. Thank you, Megan. We'll see you soon. We're taking your views on it.